Hey guys, this is a video on we've recently purchased the JCAR, I believe it's called the TL4100. You can probably see it behind us right here. Um, pretty cheap printer, it's our first ever 3D printer. Um, this is going to be just a few issues sort of covering. We found on YouTube, internet, there wasn't really any troubleshooting uh, that really went into fine tuning the printer. A lot of the advice was just try as you go, which we've wasted so much time on. So we. We thought we'd give you guys a just a little bit more in-depth video and some advice on the issues we faced and sort of ways around it to fix it. Just bear in mind every everyone's printer is going to be a little bit different. So Alex, how did we put it together? What yeah. were the steps? We basically just followed the uh, instructions that came with it. Uh, we also used the uh, JCAR website. It had um, a YouTube link there for the the video. Don't forget the music. <laughs> yeah, that music is really good. So once we got it built. What, what did we do first? Like, how did we turn it on? So first of all, just hooked it up to my uh, computer behind us uh, with the USB lead. Downloaded um, the Repetier firmware and we uh, downloaded that with the Arduino software and um, that ended up uh, stuffing up the uh, LCD screen so it basically stopped working completely and there was a few other things that uh, weren't functioning properly. Um, so we recommend just using the uh, Merlin firmware, which you can find on the JCAR website. There's a link there to download. We'll add it in our YouTube video as well, just to help you guys. Once we had it set up and all work, and we started doing a few test prints, we got a couple of objects to work really well. I think, what yeah. did we print? A dice? Or like a little cube? And a dice. Uh, that's when the problems started to happen. As soon as we started printing anything, think probably over 20 minutes, and it would just clog and the layers would start getting thin. And this is where we really made this video to help you guys. This is where we've yeah. just been stuck for ages. Or well, we've been back to store a heap of times, or I have, Alex has too. We've, we've struggled to sort of get in touch with people there that seem to, they don't know too much about this printer. Their, their advice was basically, it makes plastic liquid, pours out, nothing can go wrong, so and they weren't that helpful. And they haven't had too many issues, so they didn't know what could be wrong. One of the first things we do whenever we fault find is clean out the, I guess you'd say the print, print yeah. nozzle and header. Um, the best way, we, we use PLA, if you use ABS, you've got to use, I think, acetone and dip it in there for about 10 minutes, and the acetone melts the plastic away and cleans up real nice. If you don't have acetone on hand, nail polish. So we use PLA since it's a bit cheaper and we're tight asses. The PLA doesn't work with acetone, so we've got a we've got like a little cool blowtorch basically that we just take off everything, blowtorch it for a minute or so, and you just see the plastic drip out. Um, one tip I would say to have that I find that helps out a lot is when you're blowtorching the nozzle. I need to have one, but if you can aim the small hole pointing up and the big hole pointing down, that way plastic oozes out the bottom. Yeah. If you do it the other way, I find any of that dirt and crap that's blocking it goes through the nozzle. Goes through there, that little hole in the nozzle and just blocks it again and basically you've got to try and clean it out with a tiny bit of wire. Also, uh, try not to have the extruder hot when you're removing the nozzle because uh, there's a few times where we've got the plastic stuck in the heater tube and then I tried to clean that out with the blowtorch and damaged the Teflon tube. Ended up having to buy a whole new extruder. I couldn't find anywhere that sold the little tiny Teflon tube that goes inside the heater pipe. Um, it's crucial that that Teflon tube is in there um, to keep the uh, filament cool so it doesn't melt before it gets to the uh, uh, the tip. Um, and that sort of comes down to our second major issue where that 20 minute comes in that we were just finding after 20 minutes it was just going to shit. Yeah. Um, we believe that fault is that heat sink it's sort of getting too hot and with Alex how I was explaining before that cool pipe once that plastic gets in there and it gets to a certain temperature, you even find it once you just start heating it up, it gets really stretchy and has no strength in it anymore. So we believe what's happening is that heat, that plastic pipe's heating up, the plastic's going in it, and it's probably getting too hot that the heat's actually, because it's feeding in really slowly, it's probably going up the actual uh, filament itself. What I've done is I've pulled the plastic out and you can actually see um, it looks like a, it's all squiggly. So I think it's getting too soft inside the the heater pipe and um yeah and essentially just not doesn't have enough force to push through the I nozzle. I reckon it's happening before I reckon what's happening is it heats up and like I said the heat's actually going in the filament. So the before it goes in the pipe. Yeah. And that's where it's bending. Yeah. And that way when you push it in it goes like that. Yeah. So in the pipe it'd be fine to bend but once it's out that yeah. has to be straight. 
to go in there. So, uh, yeah, one thing mm -hmm. you might like to add is maybe a bigger uh, cooling fan on the heat sink. Um, that would definitely help. We, we haven't done this yet. It seems to be working a bit better now that we've lowered the temperature. J Carr and their knowledge just said, make the thing hot, it's not getting enough heat down to it and it's not melting properly. So, so we're, we're printing at 180 degrees now and I've had quite a few successful prints now so I've continued to use that temperature. I also did do a square, uh, a, a hollow square, started at 210 degrees and slowly uh, 5 degree increments just lowered the temperature every 10 lines and I could see exactly where the perfect temperature was. That was pretty easy to do. To do. I just printed a, a hollow square um, and then opened up the G code and every uh, ten, 10 lines basically just adjusted the, uh, the G code to lower the temperature. When we came to levelling, once we first turned it on, we must say this is a must because I reckon we probably wrecked our first printed head nozzle. Uh, yeah. Put the paper underneath it and get your finger on the emergency stop button ready because when we first turned ours on, basically it went all the way up went all the way down and dug a nice big fat hole into our heat plate down the yep. bottom. Once we put the paper in, we found it pretty much didn't mark at all. The paper took all the force, but really it is really necessary to get that piece of paper in. Probably even as a, a first try, if I was to do it again, I'd actually probably take the heater nozzle, the nozzle out. You know it's going to clear and be up too high, put it back in and then drop it down rather than it being too low yeah. and denting it because that 0.4 mil hole I think we just scratched it beyond belief and it just wasn't a perfect circle anymore. Just remember guys, like and subscribe. If you have any problems with your printer, just leave a comment below. We'll try and help you out. We'd love to hear from you guys. Let us know how all your 3D prints are turning out. You want to share any of your 3D printer settings with us or we can help you out. Leave a comment. Thanks for watching.